welcome to Hair of the Rabbit podcast. We explore everything that is rabbit. We look at different rabbit breeds, history, superstition, pop culture, news, and more. I would like to thank you for joining me today, your host, Jeff Hittinger. I'm not an expert. I'm just curious about learning more about rabbits, just like you. Halloween and Rabbits Now with fall approaching us in the northern hemisphere, the leaves are starting to drop off the trees, temperatures starting to cool off, and we're getting into October, and that means Halloween. You hear tales of ghosts, witches, vampires, monsters, and other assorted scary icons, but none is more terrifying than a bunny rabbit. Now with Halloween approaching, we have a couple rabbit tales of the weird. The first tale is Alba the Rabbit. Glowing bunny rabbits aren't just for Sherlock Holmes reboots and acid trips anymore. Alba was the name of a genetically modified glowing rabbit created as an artistic work by contemporary artist Eduardo Cac. And this was produced in collaboration with French geneticist Louis-Marie Hodenbein. A mutant glow-in-the-dark rabbit is at the center of a transatlantic tug-of-war between the unarsed who claims he dreamed her up and the French scientists who created her. Alba was born in February in 1998 at the National Institute of Agronomic Research, the INRA, in Paris, or accordingly to another article born in April of 2000, so I'm not sure which one was accurate. Eduardo Cac planned to display Alba in Avignon and then take her to live with him f- with his family in Chicago. He intended his green fluorescent bunny project to encapsulate the theme of biotechnology and its relationship to family life and public debate. This rabbit was part of a transgenetic art project called GFP Bunny by artist Eduardo Cac. The project not only comprises the c- creation of the fluorescent rabbit, but also the public dialogue generated by the project and an integration of the trans- transgenetic animal into society. GFP Bunny has raised many ethical questions and sparked an international controversy about whether Alba should be considered art at all. Transgenetic art brings out a debate on important social issues surrounding genetics that are affecting and will affect everyone's lives decades to come. And that's a quote from CAC. CAC is an associate professor at the School of Art Institute of Chicago. Some of his works is featured in Contemporary Art Explores Human Genomics at the Henry Art Gallery in Seattle, Washington, an exhibit that ran from April 4th to April 28th in 2002. In daylight, Alba looks like a normal albino rabbit, but each of her cells contains the gene for a fluorescent protein taken from the jellyfish's Aquacora Victoria. In UV light, her body glows bright green. The French scientists modified the gene to make the, to make the glow twice as strong as normal and inserted it into the fertilized rabbit egg cells. Hodemine used the GFP gene found in the jellyfish that fluoresces green when exposed to blue light. This is a protein used in many standard biological experiments involving fluorescence. When Alba was exposed to such light, she would literally glow green. Though photos by CAC showing the entire organism, including its hair, glowing a uniform green, this uh, they've had their their authenticity challenged. CAC says the scientists did this as a labor of love based on our mutual understanding of the importance of developing this project. They know my work and understand my commitment. But that isn't the way the scientists see it. In fact, says Oliver Rachoucher of the INRA, they have been working on fluorescing rabbits for 18 months before CAC approached them. The work was part of their research into techniques for tagging embryos. Rachoucher says that whilst the scientists were initially prepared to let CAC display a mutant robot in Avignon, at no point did they agree to having him take her home and now the Institute refused to hand her over. Animal rights activists and some religious leaders have denounced Alba's creators for exploiting the animal and tampering with nature. 
Moreover, scientists who investigated legitimate uses for the fluorescent protein criticized the practice of creating art by genetic engineering. The Avignon event was canceled by the Institute's director following concerns about the transport and security of a transgenetic animal and protests from animal rights activists. Eduardo Cac has described Alba as an animal that does not exist in nature. In an article published in the Boston Globe, Hodebein admitted creating Alba for Cac and stated that Alba was a particularly mellow and sweet disposition. This article generated a global media scandal which caused Hodebein to distance himself from Cac's work. All subsequent media articles present variations of Hodebein's disengagement effort. Alba's lifespan is open to question. In 2002, a U.S. reporter called the INRA in France, where Hodebein works, and was told that Alba had died. The reporter published an article stating that Alba was dead, but the only evidence she provided was a quote Hodebein as saying, I was informed one day that Bunny was dead without any reason, so, the, so rabbits die often. It was about four years old, which is a normal lifespan in our facilities. In the 2007 European Molecular Biological Organization members meeting in Barcelona, Luis Marie Hudbein presented in detail his version of the reality of the GFP rabbit story, placing emphasis on sensationalism by journalists and the TV media. Scientists from the University of Hawaii recently collaborated with a team from Istanbul, Turkey, where a couple of bright green lab rats were just part just born as part of a larger effort to better understand hereditary illness and make cheaper medicine, and they're also making glow-in-the-dark bunnies. This isn't some inhumane magic trick. The rabbits are part of a genetic manipulation experiment, one that the researchers hope will shed some light on hereditary diseases and hopefully lead the way to producing drugs to help cure them. The embryos of the two green rabbits were injected with fluorescent protein from jellyfish DNA, giving them the glowing gene that makes them green under a black light. The glowing effect is just to show that the genetic muni manipulation technique works, and in future experiments, researchers could inject beneficial DNA into the rabbits so that they might be able to produce medicine. But for now, these bunnies just glow. These rabbits are like a light bulb glowing like a LED light all over their body. But Stefan Moisiata from the University of Hawaii told the local KHON -H news station, and on top of it, their fur is beginning to glow, and the greenness is shining right through their fur. It's so intense. Don't worry, it doesn't hurt the little bunnies. Moisiata says that the glowing rabbits will live long, normal, and healthy lives, pointing to a study from Caltech that yielded glowing mice that showed no adverse side effects. And who could forget the glowing dog from South Korea or the radioactive-like kitten from the Mayo Clinic who might hold the key for an AIDS vaccine? GFP is completely harmless. Other than emitting the fluorescent light, it doesn't affect the organism in any way. How is it useful to scientists? Cell, bio cell biologists can genetically modify cells or embryos by adding GFP and then observe them under UV light. In this way, researchers might observe in real time the effects of a new drug as it moves through the body or facilitate tumor removal by making certain cancer cells more visible. As they experiment with bigger and bigger animals, the researchers gain a better understanding of how genetic manipulation works. Moisiata hopes that one day he'll cr they'll create bioreactors that basically produce pharmaceuticals that can be made a lot cheaper. Next up are a batch of glowing sheep and will and will move the Hawaiian Istanbul team research forward. And believe it or not, these won't be the first glowing sheep to show up in the weird world we live in. Next thing you will know, we'll have glowing pink elephants everywhere. If you would like to email me, reach out at hair of the rabbit at gmail.com or you can visit the website at hair of the rabbit .com. if you would like to support the podcast and keep the lights on you can support us whenever you use amazon through the link at the website on the support the podcast page this will not cost you anything extra and i cannot see who purchased what you can also become a fluffle fan supporter by donating through patreon and again there's a link at the hair of the rabbit podcast.com